he can get through these notes. All right. Are you so. Are you it? What? Are you it? I am recording. Oh, right now. Hey, Dad. So for all <laughs> classes out there, if they're noisy, find students in my 4A class. That's the period that I'm recording this. <laughs> Or don't, or don't. don't All right. Or don't. So we're in 12 for today, finding zeros of polynomials. For 8A eight eight kiddos, your test is next Friday. What is that date? Next Friday? April 19th. No, That's April 26th. So like 20. 26, thank you. So 8A, your test is on 4 <laughs> 26. So that's my 8A kiddos. That's when you'll test over this. And then my B-Day kiddos, 26, 27, 28, 29. That's when you're testing. So even if I'm absent, you know. All right. So this reviews quite a bit of what we did last class with the long division. That's why I, in, I inserted a full day on long division before we did this, because it's a lot if you don't have that skill. So to find the zeros, remember that's what we're finding if it crosses the x-axis. So one way, one way that you can do that is by graphing like we did in 12.2, okay? You can also do that by factoring or using the quadratic formula. But on the back, what happens when you don't know how to factor it? Okay, so we're going to go through the whole gamut today just to make sure you know all of them. Now when we're solving by graphing, you put this into your calculator and you see where it crosses the x-axis. But I saved you a step. Boom, there's the picture. Okay, where is this crossing the x-axis? Negative, Negative 1? Negative 2? Negative two. Two. <laughs> 1? I didn't, I was just like, where are they getting that? And 3. Now, where is the place that you can triple check that those are actually crossing where you think they are? I would look in my table. But here, x is equal to negative. Make sure I'm not doing this wrong, because... Y'all trying to get me messed up today? Here you go. <coughs> All right. Well, Miss Cleveland, you taught us to do second trace too. I did as a way to check on the test if you have zeros that are not exact integers, but no work to support it. I will count that one wrong. You need to show your work. Okay. So let's review your second favorite math or second favorite F word. Factoring. <laughs> Fraction. <laughs> what is your third, you ask? Falcon. Uh, Family. Six. Friend. Six. Six. It varies from there. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Oh, yeah. That's a double word in categories. All right. So. A lot of you still need the X method and the box or the factoring by grouping to factor. Take your training wheels off. It's time to ride your bike without that. Well, Ms. Cleveland, I still need it. Well, then you do it, but I'm not. I'm just going straight to factoring. Okay? Your legs are long enough that you can just walk the bike. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. Here we go. So. <laughs> Okay, all other classes, I told them to be quiet so you could hear. <laughs> I apologize, all future classes. Here we go. So, shh, we're going straight to factoring. So, what is the only way we're going to put something in these parentheses that's going to get us to x squared? x times x. And these are our first terms. So when you are foiling and you F-O-I-L first, you multiply the first thing and the first thing to get your first term, right? Okay. <clears throat> but to get your last term, you multiply last times last. To get your middle term, this is important, middle term is your outside plus your inside. I don't think many people have ever realized that. To get your middle term, it's your outside and your inside terms. Okay? So here, I have a couple of different options that I can use to get my last, right? It can be 1 and 8. 
or it can be 2 and 4. So I need to figure out which ones I can put in there, but they've got to equal a negative 9. So let's assume for just a second it's 1 and 8. I just go down my list. Let's put a 1 and an 8 in here. What is this outside term when I multiply them together? 8x. You all see that? My outside is 8x because I multiply them together. What would my inside term be? 1x. Is there any way that I can combine an 8x and a 1x to get a negative 9? Yeah, what do those signs need to be? Negative and negative. First try, I figured it out. That is way easier to me than any of the other long methods that we've taught you. Just learn it. <coughs> Alright, so we factored the polynomial. Now we're going to set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So we're going to take this piece and set it equal to 0. We're going to take this piece and set it equal to 0. So, let me, we're good, whatever. x minus 1 equals 0 and x minus 8 equals 0. Well, how do I solve this guy for x? Add 1. So x can equal 1 or add 8 to both sides and 8. Do I know if I got all my zeros? How do I know? Right? This is x squared. There's only two real zeros. And I got them both. I'm done. You can tell the amount of zeros there are by what the exponent is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you have a question? That's all we do. Life is good. Now we're about to amp it up. We're just like, we're reviewing. Don't get too excited, pumpkins. All right, here. This one's still pretty easy because the 5 is prime. What is the only way to multiply and get a 5x squared? 5x and x. Right? That's it. 18 is not prime. What is the opposite of prime? Composite. Very good. Okay. Not prime. Okay. Okay. So we could put a 1 and an 18. We could put a 2 and a 9. Or we could put a 3 and a 6. Right? Those are the only options for 18. Now, let's stop and think really quickly. If I were to put a 1 and an 18 in here, I would end up multiplying the 5 times the 18 and a 1 times an x. Is there any way that I can do 5 times 18 and a 1 to get a negative 1? No, let's switch it. What if I put 18 over here and a 1 here? Does 5 and 18 give me a negative 1? This is not a good candidate. Okay. Let's try the 2 and the 9. If I put the 2 here and the 9 here, what would my outside term be? 45x. What would my inside term be? Can I combine that in any way to get a negative 1? Okay, so that doesn't work. But if I flip it and I do a 9 over here and a 2 over here, what's my outside term? 10x. What's my inside term? Oh, I can make that work, right? I want my 10 to be positive or negative. I need a negative 1. Negative, so that... So this has to be negative, and this has to be positive. You with me there? Yeah. That's, for me, that's easy enough without having to go through all of that paper wasting and the time of going through your X factor or the box method or factoring by grouping. You're big kids. Take off your training wheels. <laughs> Do you see how I got there? Like a little light bulb just came on over there. You heard it. Okay, so now that it's factored, what do I do with these pieces? Let's set them equal to 0. 5x plus 9 equals 0, and x minus 2 equals 0. So here, I'm going to subtract a 9, and then I'm going to divide by 5. So x equals negative 9 fifths. Over here, all I have to do is add a 2. Did I find all my zeros? How do I know? Because it's quadratic. Exactly. Nope. <laughs> Just being honest. Hashtag ST squaring over here. Spinning the truth. T, T, T squared. ST squared. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, since the beginning of forever, every math teacher you've ever had, and don't lie to me because I know that they do this, what must you look for before you start factoring? GCF. Ooh, yes. Yes. What does GCF stand for? Oh, I'm so glad y'all did not let me down. All right. Well, what is the greatest common factor here? False. False. Now you just ruined it. You just ruined it again. Look at the two things. What do they... What do they physically have in common? Thank you. Pre-cal kids. Y'all are killing me. You're just testing me, right? Right, okay. I don't want the opportunity to teach you. You should already know this. Okay, and I did have the opportunity to teach you. I taught you this freshman year. Okay, so get off my back. Okay, so then we have... Two parentheses here, right? When I factor out that x squared, this is going to be x squared times 16x squared minus 49, right? The x squareds got factored out to the front. What kind of problem is this? Blank of blank. <laughs> Difference of squares. Thank you, Miss Bellinger. <laughs> okay. Ms. Bellinger, you must be quiet. How do we factor a difference of perfect squares? Uh, one's minus, one's, one's positive, okay. And? One minus one, one minus two. One. Nope. <laughs> squares. <laughs> squares. Oh, 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 oh. So what do you have to do that, Jaden? Find the square root of each. What's the square root of 16x squared? 4x. What's the square root of 49? 7. seven times 7, right? Exact same binomial, except they have different signs. All right, Ms. Cleveland, this one's different than the ones above it because before we just had groups of parentheses. So do we do that dude tagging along out front? You set every single piece equal to 0 still. So we've got x squared equals 0. 4x plus 7 equals 0, and 4x minus 7 equals 0. <coughs> okay, how do I get rid of the square here? Square root. What's the square root of 0? Thank you. Right, the question you ask yourself when you're doing a square root is what times itself gives you that number. Okay. Here I'm going to subtract to 7. And then I'm going to divide by 4. So I have a 0 at negative 7 fourths. Over here I'm going to add a 7 and then divide by 4. So I have a 0 at positive 7 fourths. Did I get all of my zeros? No. Okay, why are y'all saying that? Okay, now remember we had possible zeros. Yes? What is happening here at x squared? That is a root of, Two. hold on, it's a vocabulary term, a root of blank, starts with an M, sounds like multiplicity. Multiplicity, very good, okay. Remember, if you were to graph this function really quickly, why are you laughing? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing all the work here. Okay, what is happening right here? Right, is it crossing through the x-axis? No, it's just touching the x-axis, it's bouncing off of it. So that takes up two of your roots, right? So the most you can have is four. You're not guaranteed four, okay? Because we had an x squared, that takes up two of your roots, okay? So this is all the zeros that you'll have. Oh, yeah. There is a back. Let's power through. All right. So to be organized. <coughs> Focus. So to be organized, let's number these, please. One, two, and three. Those are steps. 
So when we're doing these problems, I will label them so that when you're going back and looking at your notes, like I know you all do, you can see the steps as we go through. Okay, and you can determine exactly where you're getting messed up if you're going through the process and you're getting lost. All right, step one in this case has been done for you. That was nice. It probably won't happen again. All right. So notice up here, graph in the calculator to find any exact zeros or zeros that may be given. I want you to look in table for these. Okay. For step one, I want you to look in the table. If there's an exact zero, write it down. Well, Ms. Cleveland, can I just do second trace two? Jaden, do you need to go to the bathroom? Go ahead. Okay. If you do second trace two, that is only to check yourself. If you do not have your work, I will count it off. Ms. Cleveland, why are you being like that? When you go on to calculus next year and become math majors like you all will, kids do not fill calculus typically due to the calculus concepts. Kids can't algebra. Okay. Most often, if you fail calculus, it is because your algebra skills are poor. So yes, I am testing your algebra this unit as much as I'm testing the concepts. All right. But here, I already did that work for you. I told you one of the zeros. So we're going to move directly into step two, which is using long division to factor out other known zeros. Okay? So I have 6x cubed minus 19x squared plus 2x plus 3. I didn't need any place fillers here this time because it goes down by 1 each time. But what is my divisor? Ooh, just a three? That's weird. None of them have been like that. Hmm? Let this help you. X minus three, Kayla. How'd you get there? It would have to be equal to zero, so how do we get back to zero? We'd have to subtract a three from both sides. That would be our factor. Very good. Okay, so it's always opposite of the zero that you find. <coughs> right, Max? Uh-huh. Okay, so it's always opposite. The zeros you get out of your table or the zeros I give you, opposite, because of this reason right here. Okay? All right, long division, go. Go, we'll check it in a minute. This is what fall three was about. They're all pros now. Few more moments. You good? Okay. All right, let's go ahead and check our work here. X times what will give you 6x cubed? 6x squared. Okay, then you distribute. So 6x squared times x gives you a 6x cubed. I know I did it right because that's exactly the same thing. 
but then we also distribute it to the next term. 6x squared times a negative 3 is negative 18x squared. But remember, we're subtracting both of those. Subtracting is adding the opposite. So that cancels. And what am I left with here? Negative x squared. Then I drop this term down. And that was one full cycle. I start that cycle over again. X goes into negative x squared how many times? Negative x times. Yes, sir? Why is it plus or minus on the 6x cubed? Plus or minus? No, I just distributed the negative. Subtracting is adding the opposite. So that's what we're about to do here. If you see two subtracting signs, it turns it into a positive. Yes. But well, we're about to do it again. Okay. So here, negative x times x gives me negative x squared. Negative x times a negative 3 gives me a positive 3x, but I'm subtracting. So right here, I add the opposite. Subtracting is adding the opposite. I mean, you've done that forever, dear. So if you have subtracting a negative x squared and a plus 3x, if you think of that as a negative 1, what's a negative 1 times a negative x squared? X squared. Positive x squared. What's a negative 1 times a positive 3x? Well, that just means plus a negative 3x. I think you're thinking too much about this. Here, this cancels. 2x plus a negative 3x is negative. negative x. Drop your next term down. You've completed your second cycle. Start it over. How many times does x go into a negative x? Negative 1. Negative 1. Distribute. That's negative x plus 3. Anytime you subtract the exact same thing, you get 0. zero. Life is good when you don't have a remainder, right? Let me get rid of all this over here so we have space. Now that was step two. Uh, a two step. No? Okay. I'm not the signs okay. So step three. Now once you have a quadratic term up here, you can factor or use the quadratic equation. Yeah? So much fun! Okay. So we have 6x squared minus x minus 1. We're taking off our training wheels. Well, Ms. Cleveland, there's, you know, 6 is a composite number. So we have lots of different ways we can get to 6x squared. Yes, but what's an easy way to find one of your terms? It's the only way you can multiply to a 1. 1 and 1. Right? So I already know my last terms this time. So use either your first or your last to kind of narrow it down. So what are my options for 6x squared now? Well, we've got 3 and 2, or we've got 6 and 1. Okay, well, let's plug 3x and 2x in there. What would my outside term be? What would my inside term be? Can I combine a 3x and a 2x in any way to get a negative x? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. I want my 3x to be negative. I want my 2x to be positive. Boom, it is factored. Way shorter than factoring by grouping or box method. Pre-call students, take off your training wheels. Okay, once I get my factors, where do I go? We said each piece equal to zero. Do it. Solve it down.
And don't forget the zero that I gave you. Don't forget the zero that I gave you. Those are all the zeros. Cameron? So, on the test, I'm assuming this will probably be a test question, um, are you going to give us like a remainder to deal with this? No. No, so no I'll, I'll make them nice. I'll make them nice. All right, what questions do you have for me? Ms. Cleveland, in step two, how did you? Ms. Cleveland, in step three, why did we? You're good? All right, how does example five differ from example six? I didn't give you a zero. So this time, you're doing the whole process. Okay, so look at what example or step one says. Graph and calculator and find exact zeros. And my hint to you, aka, look in the table. So everybody go put example six in your calculator, please. Example six in your calculator, please. Coffee, whatever it was. <clears throat> All right, how many zeros does your table show you? Two. I show that they have two. What's one of them? Negative two. What's the other one? Negative four. And between which two numbers is the other one? How do you know? Oh, because you're looking at your graph. Go look at your table. How can you know that you've got another zero between one and two? It goes from negative to positive, right? If you're going from a negative number to a positive number, at some point between there, you had to touch zero, okay? So anytime you're switching from a positive to a negative or a negative to positive, you know that you have a zero in between there. So, I got these two from the table or the graph. So then now you need to pick one. All right, Mr. Snowdy, what's your favorite one of those? Um, two. Let's use negative two, okay? It would not matter. You could pick either one of them. But we have elected in step two to choose negative two. If some of you would like to choose the other one and do it yourself, we can see if we get the same thing. What am I going to be dividing by, though, if I chose the negative 2? Um, X plus 2. If we're choosing the negative 2, remember when we start dividing, we always switch the sign. Every single time. Good kids that feel like they might forget that are going to write themselves a note there. Always switch the sign. All right, long division. How many times does x go into 2x cubed? 2x two two x squared times 2x squared times x gives me 2x cubed. 2x squared times 2 gives me 4x squared. But we are subtracting this. Cancel. How many x squared terms do I have? 5x squared, excellent. And then drop down your negative 2x. Boom, one full cycle. Let's do it again. How many times does x go into 5x squared? 5x times. 5x times x is 5x squared. 5x times 2 is 10x, but I'm subtracting. How many x terms do I have? Negative 12. And then I drop this down. There's my second full cycle. Start it again. How many times does x go into negative 12x? Negative 12 times. Negative 12 times x is negative 12x. Negative 12 times 2 is a negative 24. Hallelujah. When you subtract something from itself, you get a zero. 
12x? It has, it's negative 2 minus 10. Okay. All right, so I now have my quadratic term here, my quadratic factor. What do I need to do with this? Factor it. So let's go into step three with that answer. 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. All right. So if we are factoring here, where's, where's an easy place to start? The 2x squared, right? There's only one way to get there. 2x and x. Ms. Cleveland, will you count off if I use the box method? No. I'm just no longer doing that. So if that's what you need to do, slow it down, go back and on the quiz, on the test, whatever, do it there. Now we have a couple of different options for 12 because it's a composite number. We could do 1 and 12, we could do 2 and 6, or we could do 3 and 4. I'm going to be really honest with you. Very rarely is it the first one, just because those numbers are so far away from one another and typically are your biggest multiples, that if I'm looking at a 5, I'm probably not going to start there. So I'm going to start with 3 and 4. That's typically, I usually start at the bottom of the list because those numbers are closer together and then move my way up. So if I put a 3 and a 4 here, what's my outside term? 8. And my inside term is? Hey, that works. <coughs> Almost always it's going to be a variation of this last one that's just the way it typically works out sometimes you do have to move to this one very rarely is it your top one i found you in experience I'm not saying it won't be but all right so let's see what are the signs 2x minus 3 and x plus 4. why does it have to be on that side to get the sign? what are you talking about which why one? Is, the 3 or the 4? Or the minus? Yeah, why, is the, why does the negative 3 have to be on that side? Why can't it go up? Do you understand why the 3 has to be there? Uh, yeah, because... Because this gives me the 8x, right? The 2 and the 4. Okay. And this gives me the 3x. Well, I need a positive 5x. Okay. So the 8x needs to be positive, so the plus needs to go with the 4. The 3x needs to be negative, so the negative has to go with the 3. Now, do I need to set this one into equal to zero and solve it? Why? I already know that one. All right? It, that'll, be a, that'll be an integer. So really, the only one that I have to set equal to zero and solve is this one. So 2x minus 3 equals zero. Add 3. Divide by 2. So x equals 3 halves, negative 2, and negative 4. Oh, yeah. Example 7 is exactly the same as example 6, so get started. I want you to go as long as you can before you get stuck. I will go through this problem from beginning to end, but I want you to struggle a little bit on your own. Figure out where you're having problems. Go.
far as you can on your own and then we'll start going over it. start going over it. <laughs> what zeros did you get from your graph? Negative one, three. Negative one and three. Excellent. So right, you put that into your calculator, you went and looked at your table, and those are the ones that were zeros. All right, so let's pick, I don't know, negative one's written first. So I'm going to do that one. Did anybody pick three? Okay, so we'll prove here that it still works. So 3x cubed minus 10x squared minus x plus 12. And what am I dividing it by? X plus 1. Or you could have chosen x minus 3. Okay, 
I'm choosing x plus 1, it'll work either way. So here, uh, I would have to multiply that by a 3x squared distribute, so 3x cubed and a 3x squared. Let's subtract that. Well, this cancels, and a negative 10x squared minus 3x squared gives me negative 13x squared. Then I drop this term down. That's one full cycle, and I start completely over. x times a negative 13x will give me this term here. Redistribute here, so that's negative 13x squared. Negative 13x times 1 gives me negative 13x. I'm subtracting. So when you subtract a negative, that makes a positive. When you subtract a negative here, that makes a positive. So subtracting is adding the opposite. I think it's easier for you guys to see it when you distribute that negative through. So this is going to cancel. And negative x plus 13x gives us 12x. Drop the 12 and that's another full cycle. x times 12 will give me 12x. Redistribute it out, you have 12x plus 12. When you subtract the same thing, you get a zero. Whew, life is good there. Are you all feeling like you're getting a little more proficient at long division? Okay, yes ma'am? I got a remainder of six. Ooh. You used x plus one? Okay, in just a moment, I'll go back and show my work for in another class I did the x minus 3, so you can go through and see where your error is. You shouldn't have gotten a remainder, though. What'd you say? I got a remainder of Doing it this way? Yeah. Well, which number do you have wrong? Um, oh, where's the 13x? Here? Yeah, the no, 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 not the x squared. Here? 13x. Because when you do negative 10 minus 3x, you get a negative 13x squared x times what will give you a negative 13x squared? Here? Here? Yeah. Okay. Um, because when you distribute this back through, negative 13x times x gives you this negative 13x squared. The negative 13x times 1 gives you a negative 13x. <coughs> you distribute that to both terms there, and that's how you get that. And then we distribute it the negative through. All right, now we take this piece right here. So, I'm sorry, this was step two. Now we take this into step three and factor this guy. 3x squared minus 13x plus 12. Uh, all right, so let's start with the easy term, right? The only way to get to 3x squared is a 3x and an x. Now, I'm just noticing here that these numbers are pretty close together, right? So I could do 1 and 12, I could do 2 and 6, or I could do 3 and 4. My first place to start is always this last one. For whatever reason, that tends to work more than others. So let's do a 3 here and a 4 here. What would be my outside? 12x, and my inside would be 3x. Can I combine a 12 and a 3 to get a negative 13? No, so let's try it the other direction. If I put the 4 here and the 3 here. What would my outside term be? 9x and a 4x. Can that get me negative 13? Oh, yeah. Well, if this is negative and this is positive, what do both of these signs have to be? Yes. Way easier than all of those other methods that you've always been using. You just understand what you're doing. I like. Are we all starting to catch on how I'm doing this? Do you like that method or no? You're going back to your box. I don't know. We did the box. I showed you the box in here. Or factoring by grouping. Yes, sir. No, this is trial by error. That's literally what math teachers call it. Paige? No. It will not work. Where did you put your one? What is your outside? 36x? Because you multiply them, and your inside would be 1. 36 and 1 is not going to get you to your 13. Okay. All right. So here, now I set each of these pieces equal to 0. Do I need to set this one equal to 0? 
Why? I already know that one. So all I'm doing is setting this one equal to 0. 3x minus 4 equals 0. I'm going to add a 4 and divide by a 3. x equals a positive 4 thirds. And then I found negative 1 and I found 3 in my calculator. You now have a homework sheet that you will do for homework. Yeah, no, like that's fine. It's just, just another way, like, when you get to the end, you can check to see if you actually found the right zero. Alright, homework. Let me stop this. Okay. Anybody see the mouse? I understand one division now. Oh, okay. The only issue is... Oh, 